Rob Gray from iNazusReview.com. This part of the video now focuses on the science inside of the machines. We're going to simplify the science of alkaline water by taking apart these machines and really observing the water cells so that you can understand the correlation between pH, ORP, and the actual size of the components inside the machine. So let's break them down. And so ladies and gentlemen, we've really determined that it's what's inside that counts. At this point, we've taken the three machines, the Ironways Athena, the Tyne MMP 7070, and the Life 7500, and we've opened them up to the point where we can actually see the technology that's inside. The reason we do this is to help make sense of the results that we got with the pH and ORP comparisons, why those results came out the way they did. So we'll go through and conduct a few measurements to shed a little light on the subject. Now you can run this forward, reverse, you can pause it, whatever you like. We're going to simply measure these with a uh, an English ruler, and we'll go through and we'll figure out exactly the sizes of the water cells inside. So now first with the Life 7500, we'll go through and measure the size of the water cell. And the width is going to come in somewhere right around three and a quarter inches. And the length of the water cell is just about five and a half inches. For the Tyne MMP 7070, we've noticed first that the inside circuitry has a special waterproof coating over the circuit board to make sure that any kind of water spray inside the machine is not going to affect or ruin the electronics. Now, that's a big difference from the Life 7500 where we've just simply found a plastic cover that was over top of a set of antiquated power heat sinks and chips. So now back to the MMP 7070. We also noticed that it looks like it's pretty easy to service where everything's well laid out and uh, readily accessible. So the water cell width of the Tyne 7070 is just under three and a half inches and the length of the water cell is just about seven inches. And now for the Ironways Athena, you can take a look here. The Ironways Athena also has the protective waterproof covering over the circuitry to protect the internal components. And now to take a look at the water cell inside of here. Our width is just under three inches with a total length of right about five and a half inches. As you can see here on the inside of the Einwees unit, you can also notice the calcium port where the minerals are added directly in just as soon as the water comes into the ionization, or I'm sorry, the inside of the cha chamber so that it reaches the minerals before it reaches the filters or the ionization chamber itself. And so now, in summary, keep in mind a few things as well about the water cells. There's a lot more that goes on inside of the water cell than just plates and plate technology. The size of the membrane, the length of travel between where the water enters the cell and where it exits the cell. So there are a lot of different things that are going on here besides just plate technology to take into consideration. But the most important thing that we want you to consider and learn from this video here today is that if you ever see a performance test or comparison where the Hyundai beats the Ferrari, the technology that's smaller and maybe less plates, then we know that something's going on behind the scenes that you may not be aware about that's causing the result to contradict simple science. As more and more ionizers appear on the market, unfortunately some of the manufacturers are now stooping to new lows to put themselves back at the front of the pack. And unfortunately this pseudoscience and fuzzy logic contributes to a little bit of confusion in the industry and hopefully our goal here at ionizersreview.com is to help simplify some of the basic things to understand about ionizers so that you can make the best decision for you and your family.